Hey everyone, welcome to Norm's Workshop. I'm Norm Mack and today in the workshop, we're gonna go high tech. We're gonna crack open a perfectly good brand new laptop computer. We're gonna add more memory and an additional two terabyte hard drive. Stay tuned, we'll take you through the steps. My new laptop has a high speed processor and is well set up with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD hard drive built in but I need both more memory and more storage for creating and editing these YouTube videos. The laptop is a Lenovo Legion Slim 7i, but most other Windows-based laptops will upgrade in a very similar way. The process should also be the same for both Windows 10 and Windows 11 based computers. If you've never opened and upgraded a laptop before, you may have a high level of fear and may be ready to run straight to your local Geek Squad or Computer Service Center. But if you want to save some money and learn a little bit about computer hardware at the same time, this may be a relatively easy project to get you started. As a quick disclaimer, there are some risks associated with any technology upgrade. I am not a professional computer technician and unfortunately I cannot guarantee successful results or provide any level of tech support if you happen to run into errors and issues. This project may seem scary at first, but it can be completed with patience, basic skills, and a willingness to try. Installing the modules requires no tools at all, but opening the case does require a specialty screwdriver set, a plastic pry bar, and an anti-static wrist strap. Now this project should take about 30 minutes. Take your time and be precise about each step. The cost of this project will depend greatly on the modules that you choose. The precision tool set and anti-static strap will add about 15 to 20 dollars. For reference, I spent about 175 dollars in total for everything for this project. It's time to order the parts and the tools you need. Find the owner's manual or online specifications for your precise laptop and scour it for details. Does the computer even have expansion slots for additional memory and storage? If it does, then the manual should state exactly what specifications that memory and storage device needs to follow. Order your memory and storage to these precise specifications. You're also going to need to order a pack of SSD thermal padding. This is about $6 on Amazon. Well, everything has arrived and we're ready to finally tackle this project. Make sure the laptop is completely shut down and should have all of the USB and other accessories unplugged and removed. The power cord should also be unplugged and removed. Flip the laptop upside down and find all of the housing screw locations. My screws were all totally visible, but some of yours may be hidden underneath the rubber foot pads. Make note of what type of screw head they need because there's quite a variety. I was lucky all of my screws were standard Phillips head screws. Remove all of the screws on the bottom of the laptop. During removal, carefully compare the thickness, type, and length of the screws. If they're not all the same, you will need to make a note of which screws go into which holes during reassembly. After screw removal, the rear housing is likely still firmly attached to the top housing. You will need to use the small plastic pry bar to gently pry the two halves apart. Start in one location and slowly work your way around the perimeter. The housing should snap apart without using too much force. If a segment feels firmly attached, Check for a hidden screw that may not have been removed. Slowly separate the rear housing from the front. Check for any cable or other attachments between the two housings. Then set the rear housing off to the side. Attach the anti-static strap to your wrist. Left wrist may be best if you're right-handed. Attach the clip on the other end of the strap to a metal screw or mount connecting the motherboard to the laptop housing. These are usually on the outer perimeter of the motherboard. Do not connect the strap to any electrical components on the motherboard. Locate the laptop battery and its connection to the motherboard. The battery plug usually only fits one way, but make note of its orientation just in case. 
unplug the cable connecting the battery to the motherboard. The manufacturer may also recommend battery removal, but I did not do this. Take a moment to locate the empty expansion slot socket for the new memory and the SSD drive. These may be hidden under vibration and heat shield gaskets, so carefully lift these shields to look underneath without damaging them. The memory slot may also be hidden underneath a metal heat shield cover. If the memory slot does have a heat shield cover, it will need to be removed. It's likely held in place by small friction guides. Make note of its orientation so that it can be reinstalled later in the same direction. Carefully lift the heat shield out of the guides and set it aside. Now take a strip of the SSD thermal padding. Trim it down to size to fit the bottom of the memory slot and remove the adhesive liner from just one side. Position the padding strip onto the bottom of the memory slot adhesive side down and press it into place. Now you can remove the front adhesive liner from the padding strip. Be sure your anti-static strap is properly attached and then remove the memory module from its packaging. Be careful not to handle the module by its gold electrical contacts. The module has an indexing slot which will only fit into the socket in one direction. Hold the module at about a 45 degree angle and push it into the socket until it's fully seated. Now slowly push down the module until it's horizontal and snaps into the tabs on the side of the socket. Inspect the memory heat shield cover that you removed earlier. It should already have thermal padding installed inside the cover. But if there's no thermal padding, cut and apply a section to it. Now carefully orient and install the heat shield cover into the same guides and clips that you removed it from earlier. Memory installation is now complete. Locate the empty SSD expansion port. This port will have terminals on one end and a hold down screw at the opposite end. Carefully remove the screw, but do not drop it onto the motherboard if possible. The screw is tiny, so set it aside in a safe place. Remove the new SSD module from its packaging. Be prepared to add thermal padding to the new SSD if needed. My module came from the factory with thermal padding already installed. And remember, do not handle the module by the gold terminal end. The SSD module is indexed and will only fit one way into the slot. Hold the module at an angle and carefully push the terminal end into the socket until fully seated. Lightly push down the other end and attach the hold down screw. Tighten, but be careful not to over tighten. These are small, fine screws. SSD hardware installation is now complete. Check to make sure all vibration and heat shield gasket material is back in place. Reconnect the battery cable. This should only fit one way, but be sure it matches the way that you removed it. Now you can carefully disconnect the anti-static strap from the motherboard and your wrist. Carefully line up the rear housing with the front housing, and then slowly snap the two housings together, working your way around the perimeter. The housings should now be fully seated with no gaps, wires, or bulges anywhere. Reinstall all of the housing screws and lightly tighten each one as you go. Now go back and re-tighten all of the screws, but be careful not to over-tighten them. These screws are small and easy to strip out. Installation and reassembly is now complete. Take a breath, relax for a minute, but remember, we're not quite done yet. Flip the computer right side up. And once again, make sure there's no external drives, USB connections, memory cards, or networks connected to the laptop. Open it up and power it up. The laptop should start normally with no errors. Once started, the laptop should immediately recognize the new additional memory. Open File Explorer. The C drive should be the only hard drive listed. Your new drive shouldn't be on the list at all. Now, if other built-in drives like DVD drives or recovery partitions are listed, that's okay. 
But we want to make sure that no external drives like network drives, backup drives, flash drives, or even SD cards are showing on the screen. If they are, go through the process of disconnecting them, restart the computer, and then go back into File Explorer and make sure they're not there. Now the new SSD drive is going to require additional steps before it is functional and shows up in File Explorer. Close any apps and programs that may be currently running on the laptop. Then right click the Windows icon on the taskbar and select Disk Management. There should only be two disks listed on the screen. Disk 0 should show as Basic with a drive size and a status of online. It should have a rectangle to the right with a blue stripe above it. Disk 1 should show as unknown. It should have the drive size and a status of not initialized. The rectangle to the right should have a black stripe above it. There should be a pop-up dialog box on the screen called initialize disk. Disk 1 should already be checked. Make sure this is the same disk listed with the black stripe above it. MBR should only be selected for older versions of Windows and will not recognize larger drives. GPT should be selected by default on Windows 10 and 11 computers and must be selected for two terabyte drives and larger. Click OK and the disk should begin initializing. When complete, Disk 1 will now be listed as online. The new disk rectangle should now state unallocated, and it should still have a black stripe above it. Now this next part is critically important. Absolutely do not click inside any of the blue stripe disk segments. Instead, we're going to right click inside the rectangle below the black stripe. This is the unallocated drive rectangle. And we're going to select New Simple Volume. And this will bring up the New Simple Volume Wizard. Click Next to start the New Simple Volume Wizard. The volume size should default to the size equal to the total disk space. Click Next. Assign the following drive letter should be selected and set to D. If it has a higher letter, this may be normal if other internal drives or partitions exist. But be sure that all external and network drives have been disconnected. If necessary, cancel, shut down, and remove the external drives now. Then restart the format process again. If you're satisfied with the drive letter selected, click Next. And then the next screen should default to Format this volume with the following settings. Keep these default settings, but feel free to change the volume label. Perform a quick format should be checked, but do not check Enable File and Folder Compression. And then click Next. There should now be a screen listing all of the settings chosen for the new disk. Click Next unless something looks wrong on the list. Quick formatting should only take a few seconds to a minute. The disk management window will then list the new disk with a blue stripe above it and be listed as a healthy petition. You can now close the disk management window. Open File Explorer and confirm that the new drive exists. It's named correctly and it has the correct drive letter. Once you've confirmed that, close File Explorer shut down the computer, and then reconnect any normal external or network drives and devices. You can then restart the computer and confirm that everything has been recognized and working properly. If you've gotten this far and everything is working correctly, then it's time to relax, breathe a sigh of relief, and take pride in your victory over technology. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like or subscribe button, and be sure to check out our other videos because we're always up to something unusual here in the workshop.